Hello friends, welcome to risingpearl.com. Today we are talking about series 12 where we are learning a great deal on areas related to circles. Friends, this is episode number 11. And today's topic is solving questions on areas of combination of plane figures part 3. The reason we are calling this part 3 friends is that in webisode, I think it was 9, two webisodes ago, where we started taking a look at how do we solve questions in areas of combinations of plane figure and we started our part 1 and part 2. Part 1 was I think it, uh, webisode number 9 and part was episode number 10. I'm going to provide those video links below for your easy access of those webisodes on risingpearl.com. Now friends, like we did earlier in the last two webisodes, let's take a look at our strategy in solving these questions. So the first thing is that we try and see, we try and see which simple figures make up the given complex figure. So by simple figures, what do we mean? The complex figure is obviously the figure which is given to us in the question. So we try and see, we visualize which simple figures such as triangles, circles, sectors of a circle, squares, rectangles, regular polygons, etc. that make up the given figure. Simple figures mean the figures for whom we have a straightforward formula to find the areas of. So we try and visualize which simple figures make up our given figure. The second part or second step is now we want to find out which areas do we add and which areas do we subtract to get to the desired or required area. In these questions, a part of the uh, area is highlighted, a part of the figure and you are asked to find out area of the highlighted portion. So we need to understand which areas do we add and which areas do we subtract to get the required area. And third and final step, friends, as we know, is that now simply find the individual areas. So now that we have broken down our figure into simpler shapes, simple, simple, simple figures, we can find individual areas and then calculate the required area by from step two by using what area should we add and what should we subtract to get our required area. So these are three simple steps at a high level that we are going to be following for each of these questions. So in today's webisode part three, we are going to take a look at some more combination of plane figures where circles or part of circles are involved. So let's take a look at our first question. So our first question goes like this. Find the area of the shaded design in figure below where ABCD is a square. So let's name this ABCD where ABCD is a square of side 10 centimeters. So each side is given as 10 centimeter. And semicircles are drawn with each side of the square as diameter. So ABCD is a square that is given. Let's highlight this. So ABCD is a square. Now we have semicircles drawn with each side. So if I look at the side AD, so with AD as a diameter, I'm drawing a semicircle like this. So let's say the mid, the midpoint here where all these uh, patterns they meet, intersect is O. So AOD is a semicircle. With AB as a, as a side, AOB is a semicircle. With BC as a side, BOC is a semicircle. With CD as a side, COD is a semicircle. So I just wanted to make sure that you understand how the figure is drawn. So now there are two ways to solve this question and we have to obviously find out the area of the highlighted part. So there are two ways to go about it. So first we can find out the area of the whole square, right? Because the side, one side is given 10 centimeter. So clearly we can find out the area of the entire square which will be 10 times 10. And then from here we can subtract the area which is now highlighted in blue here. So in other words, let's just say this kind of looks like a leaf, you know, like when we were young, we will draw a leaf, something like this, right? So maybe you will, I'm sure you will draw better leaf than me. But I mean, if you call these as leaves, right? So area of the entire square minus area of the non-leaf portion of the square. So if we take out from the entire square, if we take out non-leaf portion shown here in blue, we will be left with the leaf portion that we need. In other words, we have to find out the area of four leaves, like the way the analogy we are using. So this is one way to think about this question. 
And I will strongly encourage you to actually proceed forward in this approach and come up with your own answer. The more you try to see through these questions, the more visually they will become more and more obvious and you will know what you would need to do. So in this particular webisode, we are going to take a second approach. So what we are going to do instead is that, let's clean this up. So in our analogy, we are calling this as one leaf. So how about directly if we find the areas of four leaves? If I can find out the area of one leaf, and if I simply multiply that times four, that will give me the desired area. That will be the area of the shaded design. So how do I find out the area of one leaf? So this is what we are going to do. So first, so let us visualize that from here we move to this state. So all I have done is I have simply, so this is our square ABCD, ABCD. So all I have done is simply, and this is our point O, as we are calling it, I have simply joined one of the vertice, vertices A with the point in the middle O. You could have taken vertex B or C or D, does not matter. So simply take one of the vertex and join that with the middle O, point of intersection. So now what further I want to do is that I have now grayed out, actually I have taken out the other three semicircles so that your mind can totally focus on one semicircle because then it will be simply a repetition of the first one. So I am focusing on the side AD. This is the side AD, right? This is AD. This is a side AD. And this is the semicircle which is drawn on the side AD. So remember like how there are semicircles. Semicircles are drawn on each side of the square as diameter. So on the side AD, I have drawn, I have shown the semicircle. I have taken out the other semicircles AOB, BOC, and COD. So that it is just easier for you to visually see through this. So this, if you think this way. Now, and this is a point O. Now what we are going to do, friends, is that we are going to do a simple construction. We are going to find the midpoint of the side AD. Let us say the midpoint is point P. This is the midpoint of the side AD. And then the last part is we are going to simply join the point P and O. So if you join the point P and O, right now, friends, if you will notice, now P is the center because AD is a diameter as given here. And P is a midpoint of AD by construction. So P is the center. So this side is equal to this side. And because AOD is a semicircle, so any point on this curve, if you join that with the center, that will be the length of radius. So O is on the semicircle. And if you simply join OP, then OP will be also equal to the radius. Right? So all of these are equal. Now we can very simply find out this angle is 90 degrees. And why is this angle 90 degrees? The reason this angle is 90 degrees is if you were to simply join O and D, you can prove OAP and ODP are two congruent triangles by SSS congruence rule, right? So these two angles will be equal and both of them up together is 180. Each angle is the 90, 90 degrees. So now if I focus on just this part that I'm highlighting here with white. So what I have right now is I have a circle. This is part of a circle. And AO is a chord on the circle. That means the part that I have just highlighted over here, this is a segment, right? So I can say that area, area, of my segment, if I say area of my segment AO, right, AO, is how do I find out the area of this? We know the area of the segment is area of the sector, which is PAO, this entire area, PAO, 
which is simply given by pi r square. Now what is r? This is r, but the total length is diameter and this, so th from here to here, this length is 10 because the square is 10 centimeters. So the midpoint of that will be 5 centimeters. So each of this is 5 centimeters. So pi r square divided by 360 times theta which is 90 degrees. This is 90. So the area of the entire sector PAO is pi r square by 360 times 90. Now from here we have to subtract the area of the triangle, this triangle. We have to subtract the area of the triangle PAO. So let's just try to simplify this if we can, area of this segment AO. So 0, 0 will cancel out, 9, 4 is 36. So we are left with here pi times 25 or I could have written 25 pi by 4 minus area of triangle PAO. So let us see if we can find out the area of triangle PAO, right? So let's see if we can give ourselves a little bit more space. So here what I have done now, friends, is I have, now we can actually, so at this point we know this angle is 90 degrees. We also know these two lengths are equal because they are radiuses. So if I were to simply drop a perpendicular from here, on this line and if I say this is x, if this is x, this point is x, so this was our a, this was our d, this was p and this is o. So area of this triangle, area of this triangle p a o, so let's do it here, so area of triangle p a o is equal to half the height which is p x p x times a o or o a same thing now what is p x so if you look at triangle p a o this angle is 45 this angle is 45 why because tri in triangle p a o this is 90 degrees and these two are equal. So these two angles should be equal. So each is 45 degrees. So if I now focus on one of the two triangles, how about if I focus on O P X? I know this value R, right? And I am trying to find out this value X P. So I can say, so this will be opposite side. So I can say sine 45 degrees is equal to Px by R, Px by 5 and sine 45 value is 1 by square root 2. So I can say Px equals to 5 by square root 2. So I can say Px that way and similarly Ox from here Ox will be again equal to this value will be cos 45 degrees and we will see cos 45 degree will be Ox by R. Cos 45 is also 1 by 2. So this will also be 5 by square root 2. Ox is also square root 2. But now this length, this length Oa is twice. Oa is 2 times Ox. So this value in other words will be half Px is 5, Px is 5 divided by square root 2 times Oa will be 5 by square root 2 times 2. So in other words, you will have here 5 square. So this will be 5 square. So let's keep it as 
5 square and this 2 and this 2 will cancel out and root 2 times root 2 will be by 2. So in other words, this area of the triangle is going to be 5 square by 2. So our area of this segment, like we talked about earlier, this segment, this small portion will be equal to, so that area will be equal to, so we have earlier, we saw it was pi r square, so it was 25 pi by 4 minus we have 25 by 2. Now this one if you can recall this is just the area of this part. So area of one leaf will be 2 times this. So area of one full leaf will be twice this. So you will get area of one leaf. To get area of four leaf you have to multiply this by four. So if you do this, then you will see that, so we have 8, right? So if you open up the brackets, parenthesis, so this will be 2 times 4, 8, and here we have 4, so cancels out, 4, 4 cancels out 2, so 5, 25 twos are 50, 50 times pi minus, so over here 2 and 2 will cancel out, 25 fours are 100, so it will be 50 pi times 100, so if you simply multiply pi should be taken as 3.14 times 50. So if you do that, so 0, 2 carry over, so 5 fours are 20, 2, so 5 ones are 5, 7, 15. And this 0 comes over, we have to put decimal after two places, so this cancels out. So this comes up to 157 minus 100 or 57 centimeters square. So area of the four leaves in our analogy put together is 57 centimeters square. Now here friends one other way instead of going this route instead of using the the uh, trigonometric ratios the one other way to that you could have done that is if you focus on so you could have done this construction where through the point of intersection of all of the leaves you could have drawn a perpendicular line like this such that this is perpendicular to the square and similarly you could have extended this so this will be perpendicular so this these divide the square into four equal parts one two this entire thing three and this entire thing four now for for this if you were to draw if you were to join o a then this actually divides the, it divides one of these into two equal parts. So remember we were looking to find out the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle is half of this area and this area itself is half of the area of the, it is one fourth area of the whole square. So this triangle is equal to one eighth the area of the square. So again, just quite simply, if we were to do a simple construction by, by uh, drawing a perpendicular line passing through O, then and, and similarly extending OP, we notice that these dotted lines divide the, the square into four equal parts, one, two, three, and four. Now, in the fourth figure, we have joined OA. So this actually divides the one of the fourth equal area into two equal parts. So the area of the triangle PAO will be the area of the triangle PAO will be equal to half the area of the this area. And this area itself is one fourth the area of the square which is 20 it is one for the area of the square area of the square let's just block this out area of the square is 100 so in other words this will be 100 divided by 8 
So 100 divided by 8, so if you take 4, it will be 25 by 2, which is exactly what we have received, what, what we have gotten here. So I'm just showing you one other way that instead of using trigonometric ratios, there was one other way how we could have found out the area of the triangle and it will be 25 square by 25 by 2. So friends now, so this is how, this is our first example where we looked at uh, a combination uh, figure where we had circles and a square. Let's take a look at maybe one other question before we wrap up. So in this question, question 2, calculate the area of the designed region in the figure below common between two quadrants of circles of radius 8 centimeter each. So if you just look at the question, it seems like very little information is given. And we just saw that this in our analogy, this looks like a big giant leaf. Because we were talking about the leaves or the flower petal. This again is very similar. So this looks like a giant leaf, one leaf, right? But before we find out, we need to still figure out how this shape is drawn. Let's take a look at this important word quadrant. What does quadrant mean? So let's take a look. So we draw ourselves a circle. So let's say the center is O and we have just drawn any circle. Doesn't matter what the radius is. And we are simply drawing one diagonal, not diagonal, a diameter, which passes through the center obviously. So AB, this is A and this is B. This is a diameter of this circle, right? Then what we do now, we know that whenever we draw a diameter of a circle, it divides the circle into two equal parts. So right now, this part and this part, they are two equal parts. This part, this entire part and this entire part are two equal parts, right? But now what we are going to do is we are going to draw one more diameter. So we are going to draw one more diameter in such a way that that diameter is perpendicular to AB. That is our first diameter. So we are going to draw something like this. So let us say now this is CD. This point is C and this point is D. So we have drawn another diameter such that our diameter CD is perpendicular to diameter AB. In this case, now what happens friends is that now this diameter CD has divided the circle into four equal parts. That is this part which is part 1, this part which is part 2, this part which is part 3 and this part this is part which is part 4. So this pair of diameters which are perpendicular to each other they divide the circle into four equal parts. So I have, I have shaded them in blue and red alternatively. Part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4. So each of these parts is called quadrant. So quad, the meaning of the word quad is equals 4. Remember from quadrilateral, quad equals 4. So when we talk about the quadrants in terms of circle, so that means that four equal parts. So now that we understand the meaning of the word quadrant, so let's go back to the question. The question stated that two quadrants. So let's go back and take a look at the question again. Let's clean this up. So this is the question. So we have between, we are talking about two quadrant, not four quadrant. So we have two quadrant of circles. So two different circles, but each of them, they have the same radius, which is eight centimeter. So now here, what I have done, I have, I have shaded this part of the square or this part of the shape or the figure. If you focus on only this side, this is our first quadrant. So if you look at this, so this, let's name this, let's call this A, B, C, D. So if I take D as center and draw a quadrant, so then this is my radius. So D as center, if I draw an arc like this, this is my first quadrant. 
this angle is 90 degrees. So D as center, I draw my first quadrant like this. Remember, quadrant divides a circle into four equal parts. So, and each part is four parts together makes the 360 degrees. So each part 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree. So this is my first quadrant. Similarly now, if we were to visualize by, by uh, blurring AD and DC, if you were to just fade them out for a moment, then if you look at now AB and BC as shown here, then this is the second quadrant. So taking B as center, if we draw a, if we draw a quadrant, if B as center and this as radius, if we draw a quadrant, it will look like this. Now these two exactly match because this radius, if we call this R1, which is taking center D and R1 as radius, and this second radius taking B as center and R2, if you call this R2, these two values are both same. They are both 8 centimeters. So this value is 8 and this value is 8. So these two perfectly match. So if you were to just superimpose one on top of other, then you will basically get this shape. So all of this friends was very important so that you can look at a shape or a figure and understand how this figure came into being. What are the parts? Go back to the strategy, the three-step strategy. First step, what are simple parts in which I can break down my given figure into? So if we are not able to visual, visualize this in terms of these two quadrants, we will not be able to solve this question. So it's very, very important. So now that the first step is done, let's now figure out what are the areas we need to add or subtract? So clearly it looks like, so now let's let's see if we can give us a little bit more space. So what we are going to do friends is we are going to simply join, we are going to simply join this point and this point by a straight line. So let's, let's continue to name this A, B, C, D. So our step two is now which areas do we need to add and subtract? So clearly, if we have joined AC, then this area plus this area, which I am yet to highlight, together will give us the area of the, or the desired area, that is the area of the designed region. So by adding this and this. So now let's find out the area of this, which is highlighted here in white and blue. So taking D, as center and R equals 8 as radius and this is 90 degrees. So what is the area of this? This area is nothing but it is the area of the segment. So if we say that and now, so this is the area of the segment, right? So we say area of let's say this is segment 1 will be equal to pi r square, what is r? r is 8, so pi 8 square pi 360 times 90, because th this is the area of the sector, this entire sector, minus, I want to subtract the triangle now. So the triangle is this side is 8, because this is the radius and this is 90 degrees, and this side is 8 again. So half height times base, so it will be half 8 times 8, 8 squared. Or in other words, so now 90 and this will cancel out 4. So you will have 8 squared pi by 4 minus 8 squared by 2. So this is the area from here, we can probably just take simply 8 squared common and we will be having pi by 4 minus 1 by 2. Now what is this? This is the area of just this part, right? Now, so that is area of segment 1. So our, our required area is actually equal to area of segment 1 plus area of segment 
2, which is this area. Now, because both of them, so similarly, if we now take a look at the, if we were to take a look at B, A, C, we will note exactly the same thing because both of these are actually same size. Both of them, both circles, both quadrants have the same radius. So, area of segment 1 will be equal to area of segment 2 or in other words, if, if one of them is this, so both of them combined will be 2 times 8 square is 64 times if you just simply find out the value of pi you can assume it to be 3.14 and if you just do this calculation this will give you the area of the designed region which is this region. So friends in this webinar I wanted to take a look at circles as part of combination of uh, simple figures and find out and help you uh, guide through how you solve questions that involve circle as part of the combination of simple figures.